Welcome to this presentation where we're going to talk about the, the clinical manifestation of a patient who has got osteomyelitis and we're also going to talk about the management of a patient who has got osteomyelitis. But before we start the presentation, please, if you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, subscribe so that you can get notification whenever I post my new videos. So when you look at osteomyelitis, which is the inflammation of the bone and the bone marrow, what can be some of the signs and symptoms that the patient is going to present with? In acute osteomyelitis, sometimes the patient will present symptoms that will not point to say this is, the, this is osteomyelitis, okay? It, the patient is going to present with non-specific symptoms. So what are those symptoms that we are talking about, okay? So when we say clinical clinical manifestation so the clinical manifestation are the signs and symptoms that we're talking about so is that uh, one this patient is going to have fever okay the fever is going to come as a result of more cytokines okay because of more cytokines that are being released by our own immune cells as well as that of the bacteria okay these cytokines they're actually stimulating the hypothalamus in the brain okay once the hypothalamus is stimulated it's going to lead to increase in the body temperature okay there will also be pain Pain will come as a result of compression of nerves in the Havasian canal. If you remember the Havasian canal, it has got nerves inside that are running through it. So as a result of those, that compression of those nerves, the patient is going to have pain at the site of, of infection. Okay? Then there will also be uh, signs and symptoms of inflammation where we will have uh, redness okay redness because of increased blood perfusion to that site okay there will also be swelling okay it's going to swell up swelling or edema this one it's because of movement of fluid from the intravascular compartment into the extra vascular compartment okay there will also be loss of function, okay? Meaning that you will be unable to perform uh, any activity to that site where you have infection. Why? Because that bone, it is dead. It can't do its function, okay? Then the patient will also have signs and symptoms of, inf of anemia, okay? So these are the clinical manifestation for inflammation. Okay, then the patient will also have signs and symptoms of anemia. Okay, so signs of anemia where we have tachycardia, cyanosis. Okay, so these are some of the clinical manifestations that the patient who has got uh, osteomyelitis will present with. Now, let us look at the management. How can we actually come up with a diagnosis to say this is osteomyelitis? Okay, so what are some of the investigation that we can actually carry out in a patient who has got osteomyelitis so the sum of the investigation that we can do is that so we write investigations some of the investigation we can do the first thing that we do it is history taking okay we correct the history from the patient or from the relative or guardian to say it, uh, if the patient maybe had uh, uh, a bone infection, okay, if maybe the patient had a skin infection such, such, such as cellulitis, if maybe the patient had an open fracture, okay, or maybe if the patient actually uh, is complaining of the pain or the bone, or maybe there's uh, edema, or redness at the site of the bone so that is the history that you can, uh, we're actually going to get from the relative or the patient we'll also perform a physical examination okay this physical examination 
upon doing a physical examination we are actually going to see pus coming out from the skin okay the patient will also complain of pain at the site of infection okay then we can also do collect the patient's blood and take to the lab for full blood count okay once we collect blood and take to the lab for full blood count this one if it shows that there is increased okay increased white blood cell count and uh, increased uh, electrosedimentation rate rather this is actually pointing to say there is infection okay although it is not a confirmatory diagnosis okay you know that even full blood count is going to show a uh, reduced uh, uh, red blood cell okay because of bone marrow depression so there will be also reduced hemoglobin eh? okay then uh, you can also do an x-ray okay x-ray of the bone this x-ray of the bone it is actually going to review uh, damage to the bone okay so the x-ray to the bone is actually going to review uh, the sequestrium okay and damage to that cortex bone okay then you can also do a uh, a CT scan okay this CT scan when you do a CT scan the CT scan is going to review the cloaca it's going to, uh, to review the sequestrium it's going to review uh, the the involucrium okay then you can also do what we call as the bone biops okay the bone biops so this bone biops you will get the the piece for culture for microscopy culture and sensitivity okay so as to isolate the causative organism so when you do a bone biopsy it's going to show the bacteria that is causing this osteomyelitis okay so that you know the types of antibiotic to give to the patient okay but you don't wait for bone biops uh, you don't wait for bone biops results to come for you to start giving the antibiotics immediately suspect that this patient has got osteomyelitis you start giving empirical antibiotics that actually kills the staphylococcus aureus okay you give antibiotics that kills the staphylococcus aureus so now from the investigation let us look at the treatment what type of treatment can we give to this patient okay so the treatment that we are going to give to this patient is that we have to give antibiotics okay you give empirical antibiotics and the names of the antibiotics that you are going to give to the patient is that one you can give uh, cloxacillin okay or cloxacillin you can also give ampicillin okay which we are which we are calling as ampicloxin okay the ampicloxin then you can also give uh expen these are under antibiotics so give uh expen which is cristapen okay then from the antibiotic remember that this patient is actually complaining of pain so what are you going to do about that pain you give analgesia analgesic the type of analgesic remember this is a severe pain if a patient is having a severe uh, a severe pain what type of analgesia do you uh, what, what type of analgesia are you going to give you give an opioid okay let's write it here so you give opioid analgesia like uh, pethidine okay then you also have to consider giving corticosteroid to the patient okay cortico steroid this corticosteroid it is to reduce the inflammation you can give prednisolone okay or dexamethasone okay so from here let us look at some of the complications that the patient is going to actually have if a patient has got osteomyelitis. Let's look now to some of the complications. 
so some of the complications that the patient is going to have we are saying what can be the complications remember that osteomyelitis mostly affects children and in children it affects the growth plate so if the growth uh, the growth plate becomes uh, affected what is actually going to happen if that growth plate becomes distorted or disrupted is that one th there will be uh, impaired growth okay there will be impaired growth meaning that um, this patient will actually not going to have uh, the bones of this patient they are not going to be growing because that growth plate it has it is dead okay it has become uh, it has undergone necrosis and it is dead so if that piece or if that uh, metaphysis the growth plate becomes dead meaning that the patient's actually growth is going to be impaired the other complication that the patient will have it is a uh, septic arthritis okay so now when you look at uh, the the metaphysis vessels the arteries that are supplying the metaphysis those arteries in a child who is uh, more than one year those uh, metaph metaphysial vessels they are not connected with the epiphyseal vessels okay so you can't have the septic arthritis but in some cases where the the metaphyseal vessels they are connected with the epiphyseal vessels meaning that that pass it can grow it can actually disseminate and reach the high the hyaline cartridge and result in septic arthritis the other complication is that uh, there will also be what skin skin cancer okay skin cancer remember that uh, uh, this pass which is coming out from the skin it can cause what we call as skin cancer okay this part that is coming out from the skin can cause skin cancer so skin cancer the patient can also have what we call as pre, uh, bone abscess okay bone abscess okay meaning that uh, like superiorsto abscess okay the patient can also have what we call as a uh, Mm, deep vein thrombosis okay the patient can also have what you call as a deep vein thrombosis because if a clot dislodges and it is in the in the vein okay that clot that has actually dislodged uh, dislodged from the metaphysis it can actually result in deep vein thrombosis there can also be septicemia okay septicemia okay they can also be pulmonary embolism how okay how pulmonary embolism remember that if that clot that is actually in the vein that clot you know that the veins they carry blood to the right side of the heart so if that blood reaches the right side of the heart you know that the right side of the heart it pumps blood to the lungs so in the lungs we have got those small arteries okay so if that clot is big and it actually dis uh, it blocks the blood supply to the lungs so that will result in pulmonary embolism there can also be fractures Okay, which we are calling as pathological fractures. Okay, they can also be pathological fractures. So that's uh, the end of the presentation about osteomyelitis. You have to remember that uh, the signs and symptoms of osteomyelitis were fever, pain, uh, signs of inflammation, signs of anemia, and some of the investigation that you can actually carry out in a patient who has got osteomyelitis. You can do history taking. You get the history from the patient about the signs and symptoms, okay? You carry out a physical examination. That physical examination is going to actually review the discharge of pus from the skin 
as well as the inflammation or swelling at the uh, site of infection. You can also collect the blood for full blood count where you're going to see that there will be increased white blood cell count as well as increased electrosedimentation rate. Then there will be low red blood cell count, okay? There will be low erythrocyte or low hemoglobin levels, okay? You can also do an x-ray. The x-ray is actually going to review uh, the sequestrium or damage to the uh, cort uh, cortical bone. You can also do a CT scan. When you take the patient for CT scan, it's going to review the cloaca, the involucrium, as well as the sequestrium. Then lastly, you can do the bone biops. When you collect the tissue of bone biops, you take for microscopy culture and sensitivity to isolate the causative organism. Okay? But for treatment of chronic osteomyelitis, you need to give empirical antibiotic as well as considering surgery for a surgical procedure which we are calling as a sequestrectomy. Okay? For a surgical procedure, which we are calling as a sequestrectomy in chronic osteomyelitis. But in acute osteomyelitis, you know that sometimes a uh, sequestrum is not even formed. So you need to consider giving the patient antibiotics so that you kill the bacteria. Okay? You give uh, those antibiotics. Then you also have to consider that this patient will be complaining of pain. Okay, severe pain. So, if in the patient is complaining of severe pain, you can give opioid uh, analgesic such as pethidine. Then, uh, you know that there is inflammation. So, when there is inflammation, what do you do? You need to give a corticosteroid. A corticosteroid is going to actually reduce the inflammation. Okay? Then, what are some of the complications that the patient is going to have? The patient will have impaired growth because there is no nutrient and oxygen that is actually being supplied to that growth plate and that growth plate it will become dead okay there will be septic arthritis septic arthritis is going to occur if the vessels or the arteries that are supplying the metaphysis they are connected with the epiphysis infection can actually disseminate and reach the hyaline cartridge and result in septic arthritis there can also be skin cancer bone abscess uh, deep vein thrombosis and there can also be sepsemia, pulmonary embolism as well as pathological fractures. So this uh, is some of the, the complications that the patient is going to have. Thank you for watching and please if you haven't yet subscribed, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get notification whenever I post my new video.